hallelujah. God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God, for starting us on our way. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We bless your holy name, God. We give you the glory, hallelujah. We give you the honor and the praise. And we want to bless your name this morning, hallelujah, for all the many great things you've done for us. We give you praise, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How you keep on doing great things for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together in this place today. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you're worthy. Come on and lift your voice today. 
Come on, clap your hands for Jesus and give God some praise. Welcome to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and the God First Broadcast. Let us honor the God of the Bible, to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's give him some praise on this morning. Hallelujah. He is truly worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And we truly thank God for our dynamic leader and pastor. Let's give it up for him, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. And to his darling wife, First Lady Pamela Wooden. And we truly thank God for our jurisdictional mothers, Beverly DeJanae. Hallelujah. And we truly thank God for the first and second assistant, Elder John Amachuku and Elder Anthony Wilson. And to all the quorum of elders and ministers, we truly praise God for them. And to our district missionary, Margaret Mose. Hallelujah. And to all the women of God. And to our beautiful mothers. Let's give them a hand clap of praise. And to our president of our mother's board, Mother Williams. And we're truly thanking God and we're believing God for our founding mother, Mother Willa Dean Turner. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to move right along in our further of our service. We're going to have prayer by Elder Corey McNeil. The Old Testament scripture will be by Missionary Janet Thompson. New Testament scripture will be by Elder Jamil Wims. And the statement of faith will be by Evangelist Ann Dixon. And then we'll have our hymn of the morning by the Upper Room Praise Team. Please see each and every one of them in this order. God bless. God we, God, we thank you. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and they were created. God, we come today just to tell you thank you. Thank you for your grace, O God. Thank you for your mercy. God, thank you for your peace. Thank you for your long suffering to us, word, O God. Not willing that we should perish, but God, that we should walk and come to repentance. God, we just come to say thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your tender mercy, oh God. God, we honor you. God, we reverence you. God, we praise you. God, we put our hands together. We lift our voice and we magnify your name. In the name of Jesus. God, we burn everything that's not like you. Thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God one more time, oh God. Thank you for bringing us together, oh God, to worship you, to glorify you. God, we thank you for our pastor on today, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. God, we ask that you would revive him. We ask, God, that you would renew him. We ask, oh God, that you would preach him once more and again. God, we thank you for our first lady, oh God. God, keep and sustain her, God. Be with her in every step of the way, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we come together as the body of Christ on today. God, asking that you would empower us, God, in the name of Jesus. God, your word declares, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, O oh God. God, we ask that you would empower us, O oh God, to do what you have called us to do, O oh God. Empower us, O oh God, 
to be contenders on today. Empower us, oh God, to stand up for your word. Empower us, oh God, to stand up for truth. And we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. And we put our hands together and bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 91 verses 1 through 4 and the word of the Lord reads he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I say I will say to of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him will I trust surely he shall deliver me deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers, and, un and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Our New Testament scripture will be coming from Colossians, the first chapter, 15 through the 17th verse. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Amen. Please direct your attention to the monitors for the statement of faith. Our belief concerning the Bible. Our belief concerning God. Our belief concerning the church. Our belief concerning sin. Our belief concerning salvation. Our belief concerning Christ. Our belief concerning the Holy Ghost. Our belief concerning sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen.
Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now we'll have our welcome address by Sister Joanna McCoy. Then we have greetings from our First Lady, First Lady Pamela Wooden. And then we will have a women's history presentation by our women's department. Please receive each one of them in this order. Good morning. Good morning to all of the saints gathered in the house of the Lord, to the people of God here this morning, gathered on YouTube Live and Facebook Live. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord. We stand at this time to welcome all of our visitors and guests. If you are worshiping with us for the first time or just visiting the upper room today, whether you plan to visit or stopped by with family or just happen to be in the area, we would like for all visitors to stand now. Good morning to you. God bless you. Good morning. So glad to have you. Good morning. Good to see you today. Please remain standing. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., First Lady Pamela Wooden, and the entire Upper Room Church family, welcome to the service of the Lord. We are very glad that you chose the Upper Room to worship this morning. Our junior ushers are approaching you now to pass out visitors' cards. We would like for you to complete those and then to return them during the offering. And attached to the visitors' card is a name tag that we would like for you to fill out and to wear just so that our members may greet you properly today. We are so glad that you are here. And we acknowledge the presence of the visitors that we had during our 8 a.m. service as well. We know there is a word from the Lord that shall come forth with power and authority. We pray that you would hear and receive from the Lord this morning. He has something special in store just for you. And again, we're glad that you are here to receive from him. If you noticed or may have been wondering about the rainbow flags hanging in our rafters, we at Upper Room are reclaiming God's rainbow. We believe the rainbow belongs to the church. The one that you see hanging to your right is the one that God promised us in the opening book of the Bible, that he would not flood the earth again with water. And the one directly behind me is the one he promised us in the closing book of the Bible that we see around about the throne when we get to heaven. We're the saints of God. We believe in the things of God and the rainbow does belong to the church. If you have any needs during our service today, we have junior hospitality working today. They're standing near the back doors with black dresses and yellow flowers, and they'd be eager to assist you with any needs. We are so glad that you're here. Upper Room Church family, please stand with me now as we greet our visitors warmly. Visitors, we welcome you. Amen. Clap your hands one more time for our visitors. We thank God for all of you who have chosen the upper room as your place of worship on this morning. We do give praise, glory, and honor to the God of the Bible. We thank God. Uh, we don't take it for granted that the Lord is just going to show up, that he's going to be here. But we welcome him, and we want to know that God is essential to every part of our service and our being. We do give honor and respect to our great leader. What a mighty man of God we have in Bishop Wooden, to all these fine men of God that serve with him. We thank God for them, to these beautiful women of God. God bless you all in your respective places. I want to take this time on this last Sunday in March, which has been designated Women's History Month, I thought it would be appropriate, not that we don't know, because we do know, but the Bible does tell us to stir up their minds by the way of remembrance. So I thought it would be appropriate just to define what a woman is. Praise the Lord. Amen. A woman is a human being, born a female. Praise the Lord. Distinctly different from a man or a male. Originally, the woman was made by the man or made from the man, made for the man, but she was made different. She was of the, she is of the same kind as a man, but she is different in that she is not an animal. She's not a bird. She's, she's not a, a, a fish. Praise the Lord, but she is a humankind just like the man is. She's the feminine side. She's the feminine part of man. You know, as a single man and woman are side by side, not 
up and down, but they are equal side by side. But God, if you remember when God originally made the woman, he made her a wife. And a wife is to a man his counterpart. They are connected. So the woman is the hollowed out one. She is the one who has been designed and developed and shaped to fit the man. Praise God. So what that means is that the woman is the one, definite article, the one who was made to, uh, for the man to have someone to have sex with. Praise the Lord. She is the man's sex partner. The only sex partner for the man is the wife which is originally how she was originally formed. So I would like to ask all of the women in the house of God to stand on this morning. Praise the Lord. If you are a woman and you know that you're a woman, glad to be a woman, proud to be a woman, stand on your feet. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for the contributions that you have made, the impact that you have made in your families, in your communities, on your jobs, wherever you have gone, whatever contribution you have made, I would like to say to you, thank you. And I just want you to know, on this Women's History Month, I salute you. God bless you. Prepare your hearts to hear and to receive the word of the Lord. God bless. Good morning, praise the Lord. And as we close out Women's History Month, our media team under the leadership of Sister Brittany Evans and amen, and Mr. Gary Leach have been celebrating Women's History all month long, producing pieces and spots, highlighting the achievements and acknowledging the works of women throughout our congregation. But today we are closing out Women's History Month, giving a salute to our very own First Lady Pamela Wooden. Media team, roll the tape. Wow, what an amazing woman she is. If I were asked, what does the 2022 Proverbs 31 woman look like? It would be First Lady Pamela Wooden. She is known for her work in the home, the community, and her excellence in inspiring women to live a wholesome and Christ-centered life. What an intelligent woman she is. She's powerful, anointed, and bold. She proclaimed God's story, understanding that it must be told. Told to women, because this is her mission in life, to see us experience a God-first life. What a caring woman she is. Hearing the plight of her church members, family, friends, and our nation, she gathers the women of God together on Thursdays pleading God's glory to intervene in tragedy, sickness, and the unborn. What a strong woman she is. Her strength is impeccable as she models maneuvering life's great tests. Cancer, grief, nor persecution has stopped her. She stands tall, relying and trusting on the Lord as she gives him her very best. What a courageous woman she is fighting for our Christian rights as women, championing our cause, leading out and pushing back against the many ungodly laws. I mean, she works tirelessly in encouraging women to go deeper in their love for Christ and building a sisterhood that can remain against tough times and against all odds. Wow, what a first-class woman of grace, vision, and beauty she is. Her name shall be praised and written down in history for her leadership, her strength, 
her influence and her commitment to the cause. She will forever be honored. And First Lady Winning, your legacy will live on. Hi, my name is Pamela Amanchuku and I am the First Lady's granddaughter. For a few moments, I wanna talk about how she's a woman of God who loves her family. My grandma is an amazing woman. When I ask my friends at school what comes to mind when they think of their grandma, they said she's a person who gives them what they want, when they want, and how they want it. But when they asked me, I said she's a godly woman who might not always give me what I want, but each and every time I'm with her, I learn something valuable. In Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 13, it says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her so that he does not lack anything good. She will do him good, but not evil, all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. The two points that stand out to me the most are jewel and willing hands. If you've been following the ministry for quite some time, you know that we call her the jewel of our ministry. She is also a willing person. She isn't the type of person to say, well, what's in it for me? You owe me one or will I get paid? She's a woman of God. I love you, Grandma. God bless. Hello, my dear. I'm joining the women today during this Women's History Month to acknowledge the greatest woman that I know of, and baby, that is you. You know, the Bible says right here in Proverbs 31 and uh, 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. That is, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but you'll fill with both charm and beauty. But it says, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And honey, you are certainly a woman who fears God. You are a tremendous wife, a tremendous mother, a tremendous grandmother, and all the accomplishments, the things that you have done here at the ministry, the things that you have accomplished in your personal life, the things that you are doing with our women's department. Oh my, you are such a blessing and a tremendous woman of God. I want to thank all of the wonderful women of Upper Room for acknowledging you during this Women's History Month. Baby, I love you. Congratulations, and may God continue to use and bless and keep you. God bless. Come on, Upper Room. Can we give it up? A great big hand clap for our very own First Lady. First Lady Wooden, will you please stand? I'm here with some of the members of the executive team, and we just want to say that we thank you, not just for being an ordinary woman, but for being a godly woman. Your excellence in ministry and your godly leadership has not only benefited the, women of, benefited the women of God here, but the men and children and families all over this world. And we would like to present you with this plaque today from our church, and it states, First Lady Pamela Wooden, our shining example of strength, dignity, confidence, and wisdom. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, shall she shall be praised. Proverbs 31 and 30, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Upper Room, we have the greatest First Lady, don't we? We celebrate you. Come on, give God your hand, clap of praise again. Hallelujah. And now we'll have our announcements by Evangelist Patricia Lester and the music collection by the Upper Room Praise Team. And after they have come, we'll have the presentation of our leader and pastor by Elder Anthony Wilson. Please receive each and one of them in this order. This week at Upper Room, the New Horizon District Meeting, hosted by Superintendent William H. Cooper II, will conclude this evening at 6 p.m. here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Prepare your hearts now to hear the word of the Lord from our district superintendent. The service will be streamed on the Upper Room Church of God in Christ YouTube channel and Facebook page. Numerous misplaced items are now stowed in our lost and found area located in Classroom 1. Please be sure to secure all personal belongings before Wednesday, March 30th. 
Be sure to save the date as the Focus Young Adult Ministry will host a youth and young adult shut-in to be held Friday, April 8th at 8 p.m. Get ready for a night of seeking the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If you are in or visiting the Raleigh area and looking for an opportunity to gather with the saints for a God-first experience, the Upper Room is pleased to offer two services every Sunday morning. Join us at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. for Sunday worship service in the sanctuary. You can also join the Upper Room Church of God in Christ every Sunday at 11 a.m. and Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. for the live stream of our services on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. will bring a fresh word from the Lord relevant to our times and equip you to contend for the faith. Thank you to our viewers throughout the United States and abroad for your weekly support of our broadcast. Please be reminded there are several ways to give to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. For online giving, please visit easytithe.com forward slash URC. Also, please use only one email address for each Easy Tithe account so we can properly track your giving. Within Easy Tithe, you can now initiate the Recur option, which allows you to select a designated amount to be automatically deducted from your account. You may also visit our website, upperroomgospel.org, and select the Giving tab. Or you can mail your gift to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, Post Office Box 447, Garner, North Carolina, 27529. As always, thank you very much for supporting the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Take time to download the Upper Room Church of God in Christ mobile app. It's filled with features, including access to sermons, easy tithe giving, events and registrations, a church calendar, prayer requests, and more. Visit your device's app store, search Upper Room app, and look for the church logo. Once downloaded, select the profile icon and enter your credentials. If you already have an easy tithe account, please use the email address or login information associated with that account. This feature allows you to see your easy tithe giving history join groups, and much more. Stay connected to your church through the Upper Room Church app. The NC Third Kojic Academy is preparing for the 2022 summer semester enrollment. If you've been called into ministry and have a desire to pursue licensure and ordination, or you would just like to gain a deeper understanding of doctrine while enhancing your educational level, the NC Third Kojic Academy is for you. Our training will engage called ministers and missionaries, as well as laypersons, to zealously defend the God of the Bible and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Registration is now open through April 15th and classes begin Saturday, April 23rd. All classes will be via Zoom and tuition is $225 per semester. New students are required to submit a $50 non-refundable fee with their application. To enroll or for additional information, visit nc3rd.org or send an email to infotech.nc3rdca at gmail.com to request an application. Bishop Wooden will be the speaker for the Virginia District Meeting hosted by Superintendent Willie Bamberg II to be held Friday, April 1st at 7.30 p.m. The service will take place at Judah Sanctuary Church of God in Christ located at 1419 County Street in Portsmouth, Virginia. The attire for the evening is dark suits. name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden here on behalf of Director Bishop Michael Golden Jr. God bless you. Get ready for men's conference, a men's conference like no other. We know that you're going to be blessed because we have something for every area of your life. We're going to feed your soul, your mind, and your body. The scripture says, I would that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Let me say that again. Be in good health. This year, we're going to spend some time on your physical man so that you can serve the Lord in good health. It's working for me. I get a chance to exercise on a regular basis. And Upper Room Riders, are you ready to ride? Yeah! Let's ride, guys. Yeah! 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 1 and 8 says, after that the Holy Ghost come, ye shall have power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody need a refilling of the Holy Ghost? Anybody want another dose of the Holy Ghost? Come on, put those hands together and bless the Lord. Once more. Once more. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost.
Hallelujah. We honor the God of the Bible on this morning. His son, Jesus Christ, is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Feel me, Lord. Saturate me in your Holy Spirit. We're resting on our feet all over the sanctuary. You all may remember the spiritual grenade that went off in here last Sunday. The presence of the Lord filled his holy temple. It was because the man of God, our leader and pastor, preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is found very easily. All you have to know and all you have to do is look on the God side of things. And that's where you will find our pastor. On today, it will be no different. He is armed with God's truth that will strengthen us, encourage us, and help us on this Christian journey. Saints and friends, we are grateful to God to have a leader like we have. Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Yes, there's others that preach and proclaim the gospel. I'm not taking away from anyone else, but I say we have the greatest pastor on this side of glory. So without further ado, put your hands together and receive this giant in the gospel, our leader and our pastor, Bishop Patrick Lane Wooden, Sr. Let us give praises to the God of the Bible, God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All of you, let's just clap for him and worship him and he's a mighty god he's good and worthy to be praised in the name of jesus Woo! lift your hands to him right now all over the sanctuary today holy ghost feel me feel me once more feel me holy spirit my god and you know the lord will fill us if we would just seek him you can be seated if you would like. But he said, seek me. And you will find me. When you've searched for me. With all of your heart. Seek me. And. All of your heart, that's when you'll find me, when you search for me, with all of your heart, oh Lord, and you will find
He says me And you'll find Testimony and uh, how the Lord changed my whole paradigm. I thought number one Sing, Bishop. would surely be me. Mm, I thought I would be what I wanted. I thought I could build on life's shift in sand, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. One more thing that I thought. I thought. I couldn't make it all alone mm, and I thought I could do this on my own I'm going to tell y'all something I viewed myself as a mighty a mighty big man but I found out I can't even walk without you holding my hand. How many realize this today? I can't even walk without him holding It's too high in the valley. It's too wide. Down on my knees. I've learned, I've learned. And I can't even walk without your holding. If you know this for a fact, tell the Lord, can't even walk 
about your holy. Life's mountains are much too high. And the valleys are too wide. mighty God we serve. How many know that we can't walk? We can't do anything without the Lord. Got to have him. Can't breathe without you. I can't sleep without you. I can't get out of my bed without the Lord. I can't. I can't. I thought I, thought I was in charge. But I learned better. And we just can't do it. Not without the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. To God be the glory. We give honor to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords. Great God of the Bible. To my first and second today, tremendous men of God. And how about this praise team today? Uh, amen. Thank you all. Thank you, Brother Durham. Thank you uh, to the praise team and our music ministry. They are anointed and they're all saved, all sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and mean heaven all the way. I honor all of our elders and ministers today. Thank you. Elder McNeil, our um, master ceremony. Job well done. Job well done. To our administrator, evangelist Patricia Lester, and to our jurisdictional supervisor, the one and only Supervisor Beverly DeJanae. Amen. A gift from the Lord to us. District Missionary Margaret Mose, amen. To the one and only Mother Willa Dean Turner, we certainly do. Praise the Lord for that woman of God. God's doing great things. To all of our mothers today, Mother Williams, we thank God for you. And all of the mothers, I look and there's my 
Mother, Mama, I'm so glad to see you today. I thank God for my mother. Amen. I started talking about her, and then I hear Brother Willie Neal Johnson, the late Willie Neal Johnson, talking about his mama. Can't nobody do like my mama. Amen. So I praise the Lord for her and to all of um, the ladies today. This Women's History Month. Amen. And um, we salute all of the women. Brethren, let's stand and give a great big round of applause to all the factory made women. Amen. We don't believe in any of those laboratory jobs. Amen. Amen. I want to praise the Lord and I want to thank Sister Brittany Evans. She did a tremendous job working with Brother Gary Leach to put together that piece uh, that they did honoring the finest woman that I know of, my lovely wife and the first lady of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And, uh, our ministry, I just... Uh, Love her, and she's the epitome of woman, and I certainly do thank God for her. And she gave a powerful tribute uh, to the women today. Amen. Um, Sister Harper and Sister Owens, great job. Amen. And uh, 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 Sister Rayford, praise, tremendous job today. Um, you can tell by my wife's uh, tribute that she didn't know we got a good. She didn't know that a tribute was coming in her honor. And when I heard about it, when it was brought to my attention, I was just so moved and I, I was just in agreement uh, with it because I praise the Lord. You know, when you look even across the body of Christ now, the landscape of the church world is different. And I praise God for a wife who's happy to be a wife. Amen. Amen. I'm glad about that. Just grateful. Uh, I praise God for a wife who loves working in the church and serving the Lord and um, uh, I thank God that um, she has class. Amen. And you know, you can't teach that. Praise the Lord. Or you can't buy it. Hopefully you can teach it, but you can't buy it. You know, I know people who have a whole lot of money, but no class. She's a class act and loves Jesus Christ, loves the church. She loves me. Loves my our children and our grandchildren. She loves us, and I thank God uh, for her. She loves my mother. She loves my son-in-law. She loves the saints, and more importantly, she loves God. Pam, Pam is saved, um, and so I'm grateful and I'm appreciative that you would acknowledge her in the way that you have. This is week. 97. Week 97. 97 weeks of live services. Amen. We're headed toward week 100, which will be this coming Easter Sunday. Only the God of the Bible could have arranged that. That um, week 100 would fall on Easter Sunday. It paid uh, to be ready. Uh, thank you, Evangelist Lester. When the story is told, we can never tell the story and leave out the plan that God gave you weeks before we entered back into the service. She came to me and said, I have a re-entry plan. And I said, well, let me see what your re-entry plan is. And when I looked at her re-entry plan, I said, that's a re-entry plan. Let's go for it. And so we were ready. We were ready. We, we were ready, waiting for the governor to be overturned because we knew he had, uh, a, had step, went beyond his constitutional powers. Freedom of religion is our first, our first right. And putting the church on the non-essential list. What's wrong with him? And thank God, thank God, that was overturned. And we entered into the service the next day. And had we waited uh, a day or two, uh, a week or two later, 
then uh, uh, week 100 wouldn't be on Easter Sunday. So we're going to have a week 100 celebration uh, on Easter Sunday. Amen. And we're, we're, we're working on some things. And I just believe, uh, should the Lord allow us to live and the Lord delay his coming, that is going to be uh, uh, a celebration. Someone spoke to me right after service today saying that uh, they were at a grocery store and they were buying some things to give to some needy people. And they explained to the grocer that our church does things like this. And, and she said to the, gro the grocer, said to her, are you all back in church? And she said, we, we're coming up on our 97th week. And the, and the person she was talking to said to her that uh, we will be entering into our church for the first time this Sunday. Oh, they're 97 weeks late. Amen. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad up a room that we didn't fold like a cheap tent. And we didn't let the devil convince us that all the other places in society are safe. The grocery store is safe. Um, Target is safe. Walmart is safe. All these other places is safe to attend. But the house of God is dangerous. People said Wooden is, he's bitten off more than he can chew. Oh, there's going to be a great big COVID outbreak at Upper Room. It might even get him. All I can say is if you're holding your breath waiting for that, all I can say is you better breathe. Because here we are 97 weeks later by the grace of God. And I make my boast in the Lord. God did it. And the Lord made us a promise. He said, I'm going to give you a Asa blessing. Eyes of the Lord run to and fro in the whole earth, seeking whom uh, to someone to show himself strong on their behalf. And God is certainly upper room, showed himself strong on our behalf. And I think a praise goes in there. Amen. I make my boast in the Lord. What a mighty God, a mighty God we serve. So I am thankful. I'm excited uh, about what the Lord is doing. Uh, we've experienced some things that can never be taken away from us. Praise the Lord. Swimming upstream with very little encouragement, we hung in there. Amen. While others were telling us to close and that we're being irresponsible. We, we weren't being irresponsible. We were obeying the scripture. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But so much the more, gather together so much the more as you see the day approaching. And we did just that. And we'll talk about, uh, to you more about it. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for these workers. I'm grateful for the camera operators. I'm grateful for the church house band, to the church house band. I'm grateful to our praise team and to uh, the security team who during those seven weeks when we were closed where the people couldn't come. We never closed the church. The saints couldn't come for seven weeks. During those seven weeks, um, there was a select group of people who came out every day, every week, on Sunday mornings and on Thursdays, and we had church. I like preaching to you better than I like preaching to pews. Amen. You have to change. Do you know to preach to the camera um, the way we did it, it requires changing your whole preaching cadence because you play a, great, a, a large role in a sermon. Your responses and uh, uh, your saying amen for those who do plays a mighty role in the way you deliver a message. And uh, when you're preaching to the pews, you preach to some imaginary people. Now, the upside to preaching to the pews was did nobody have a long face because I only imagine happy people. <laughs> Amen. And it was a wonderful time, and we all leaned on each other, not knowing what would be, not knowing, because, you know, uh, they were keeping a big COVID count then. All was in the... Everything they were talking about was who died and this and that. But God watched over us. And I thank God for these mothers, these senior ladies right here. I thank God for them. I thank God for them. 
when we open the church, these senior citizens who are well within the, you know, the age where they were supposed to be vulnerable to COVID, they were among the first to come back with their hands lifted. And for 97 weeks, they've been in place and God didn't let us lose one of them. God is good. Now, what you gonna do with that? What are you gonna do with that? Other than to tell the Lord, thank you. And the Lord told me, he says, Patrick, trust me, just give me a chance. I'll keep you. Just give me a chance to show you what I can do. And look at what God has done. I am not a hologram. This is not a recording. I am alive and well, standing here before you now, by the grace of the Almighty. Amen. For those who chose to get vaccinated, that's your choice, and I respect that decision. Those who chose to get boosted, that was your choice, and I respect that. And then you respect those of us who chose to get none of that. But you just go on in the name of the Lord. And um, here we stand. And I am grateful. Somebody said, well, you sh should I said, well, make sure you talk to your doctor. Well, I did. And my doctor told me, he says, given your, I don't know what color I had to do with it. He said, with you being, a, you being an African-American male, at your conditioning and your age, um, I think that your chances of getting COVID is about 1%. And your chance of being hospitalized with it is about 15%. And I said to him, uh, repeat that, Doc. And he did. And I said, well, Doc, I'll take my chances. And I'm going on with the Lord. And I did just that. And from the, the day that we entered into the church, 97 weeks ago, up until now, yours truly have stood here and preached twice, because we had to go to two services, uh, for 96, 96 of the 97 weeks, because one week was pastoral anniversary, and we had a guest. And the Lord has kept us and kept us strong and kept us going. And God is a keeper. God will keep you. And many got COVID and the Lord healed you. Amen. And here we are today in the house of God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. <clears throat> I want to go to the word uh, this morning. I want to I call your attention to the third chapter of the book of Joel. Joel chapter number three. I want to thank all of the visitors that we have who are here with us today. I want to praise God to our friends who are streaming. I want to praise God to our brothers and sisters in Christ who are with us today. Who, who Some was with us yesterday. We had a wonderful, wonderful uh, evangelism uh, gathering. And I want to I want to thank the Lord for the saints. And I want to just say this, and this is a testimony to the power of just hospitality. It's one thing to be deep, it's one thing to be spiritual, it's one thing to be able to speak in tongues, and I guess to call down fire from heaven and all that. Uh, but nothing is as powerful as just being nice. Amen. Amen. Just being nice. And, Smiling at people and when you speak to people, look at them and just be nice. Um, we got a testimony yesterday from one of the darling saints. We got a chance to host the saints yesterday. Saints from the Church of God of Christ from everywhere. We were so honored that they would come and do their workshop here. Um, the president of evangelism asked me how much would I charge for them to use our building, and I told them, charge what? For what? I'm on the team. I'm a part of the church. No, we're not, we're not going to charge a dime. Come on in. We're, we're glad to see the saints. And, um, uh, but I want to thank God. That was a lady who had suffered um, the loss of her husband. The story was told to me that she just, she just couldn't eat and just going through. And the, and the kindness, the gentleness, the professionalism of the saints yesterday just touched her heart 
and um, she went back to eating and she needed to eat you can't live if you don't eat uh, they didn't have a prayer meeting didn't nobody lay hands on her didn't nobody apply oil just people being personable and being nice I pray that you sat beside someone nice today if you didn't please get up and move and, and get get around someone who has the Holy Spirit and has some has some sense amen um, part of uh, the effect of hip hop culture I thank God that I was grown before it took root. I'm glad that it didn't come in my formative years. Among the things is it taught people not to smile. Everybody looks mad and all that stuff. Get ready to buy the album. I don't buy misery. Man, if I pick it up and you don't look happy yourself, you know, there's no point in me listening to those seven songs. Mm -mm. <laughs> Go find somebody who has some joy. Because life is worth living. Amen. Happy birthday, Deacon Joe Morgan, our great chairman. The chairman is 83 years young. And at 83, the rest of us still can't keep up with him. Chairman, stand and take a bow. There's the man right there. Oh, I just, I, I, I love him. I revere him. I respect him. He's a godly man. He, he's, a, he's a preacher's deacon, and he's the chairman of our board. And, sir, may God continue to bless and keep you. Now, how many years now have you, are you healed from that rare form of bone cancer that when they discovered it, it was at advanced stages in your life? And on that Sunday morning, God gave me to tell the saints that if somebody danced today before the Lord, God would heal them. You ran down here and, and cut a step or ten and then went back to your seat and told your wife, God healed me. How many years have that been? 21 years ago. Isn't the Lord good? 21 years ago. A rare form of cancer. And when he got the report from the, doc the doctor, because, you know, he went, he, went, he went to the doctor telling him what God said and what God did. And he, the doctor told him, says, well, looking at the chart, says, well, he did it. He did it. And 21 years later, we're proud of you, sir. We love you. God bless you, man. Yes, sir. A good man. A good man. Joel chapter number Three, verse nine through eleven, verse seventeen, and verse twenty. It reads as follows Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them, let them come up. Let them come up to Jerusalem. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause the mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Verse 17. So shall you know that I am the Lord, your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall be no strangers pass through, and there shall no stranger pass through her anymore. And verse 20. But Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem 
from generation to generation. For your consideration, verse 10 says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. To our friends who are streaming, let the weak say, I am strong. I want to preach today from this subject, and it will require uh, you to give me a chance. When I gave the title in the 8 a.m., all I heard, I didn't even hear crickets. I mean, they said nothing. And I applaud them, my brother, for their honesty because when I gave my subject, it didn't sound right. It didn't sound like it um, fit the scripture. So one thing about you guys, you know, who the person is don't seem to matter. (laughs) Track record doesn't matter no matter how long I've been pastoring. If it doesn't sound right, you're not going to even give me a benefit of the doubt, amen. You just go... (laughs) You just go around. Now he's got to explain this one. (laughs) What is he he going to do now? So I want to preach from this subject. Why can't we talk like them? Why can't we talk like them? Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Why can't we talk like them? Father, bless us now as we minister the word of the Lord. May we preach it with power and authority and with clarity in Jesus' name. Amen. I really need you to listen to me um, today. Why can't we talk like them? Now, what will help in Understanding um, this particular message that God impressed upon my heart to share with you is I will just open up at the beginning so that there won't be much suspense, in, at least in this part of the message. I will reveal to you who the them are. And then when you see who the them are who they are then you'll understand why I'm talking the way that I'm talking and it it will help you with what you see going on um, in the news uh, in the media because the world is talking loud such a way the world is screaming the let the weak say that I am strong according to verse 9 and um, and I'll show you even deeper, but just to show it to you, the them that I'm asking, why can't we talk like, are the enemies of Israel. V- verse 9 says, proclaim this among the, not the Jews, but among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Wake up your best fighting soldiers. Let all the men of war, everybody who bears the uniform, let them come up. That is, let them come up and fight against Jerusalem. Let them beat their plowshares into spears and their pruning hooks plowshares into swords and their pruning hook into spears and then let them encourage each other make sure they participate in locker room talk make sure they give each other pep talks make sure they convince each other that they can win this battle let them say even the weak among them 
let them say that I am strong. The world is talking loud. The world is pushing wickedness um, in a way that is unparalleled. There used to be a family hour where certain things they, they, they would not show on television. That hour is gone. Any time of the day, you may see some, two persons of the same sex kissing each other on television. They could care less that your little two-year-old, your three-year-old, your little boy, your little girl is watching. They could care less. It makes no difference to them whatsoever. They're promoting wickedness. Um, this is, Patricia, this is unfair of me because we already have our slides set. But, and they may not be able to do it. But the, the, the slide that I had Thursday night of the Lieutenant Governor, I wonder if they still have that. I, I want to, if you can find that one while I'm talking, I want to show the saints something. I want to show you how the world uh, is talking loud. As you know, the lieutenant governor that we have uh, is a history-making lieutenant governor. He's the first African-American, first black man to be the lieutenant governor in the history of this great state. Mark Robinson is his name. He is a godly man. He's a Christian man. He's a loud man. He's a strong man. And um, uh, he's, he's pro-life. And in his sharing his own testimony, I want to show you how the world is talking if they can, you have that handy for me. And it's always better that once I give you uh, slides, keep them. Because you never know when we may call back up, call them back up. So I just gave them this one Thursday night. So hopefully they have it. Um, in his sharing his testimony, he gave an interesting testimony. He shared a part of his life that he didn't have to share. 31 to 33 years ago. That's quite a bit of time. It's quite a bit of time. I don't know where he was spiritually 33 years ago. But that many years ago, um, he paid for an abortion for the woman who is his wife. He said when he gave his testimony, it, that it was wrong then and it's wrong now. He didn't try to make it right. He didn't try to say what I did, what we did, we should have done. In fact, he says, after having done that, it showed me, us, the horrors of it. And we were wrong. But he wanted to share his testimony for the benefit of helping someone else. Um, they, they just told me they don't have it, so I'll thank you. Elder Amanchuku is sending it to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so you have it, and I want you to put it up. He gave the testimony, and he shared it for the benefit of others because there's this, this idea that pro-life people you know, people who think that babies ought to be born. Or a bunch of goody two-shoes who have never sinned and never fallen short and that kind of a thing. And nothing can be further from the truth. Many who are pro-life became that way as a result of experiencing that horror. And uh, I don't buy for one minute the idea that just because you've committed a sin that you can't speak against it. See, because if that's the case, can't nobody preach. 
Because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If that's the case, nobody qualifies as a church mother. Nobody qualifies as a bishop. Nobody qualifies as anything. For we are all forgiven. The Bible says, and such were some of you. Were, but now you are washed. Now you are cleansed. Now you are justified. Are you following me? We're all saved. We've been forgiven and brought out. Nobody preached like Peter did on the day of Pentecost. And Peter said to the listening crowd, you have denied the Holy One. Now for those who know the Bible, Peter denied him three times. But he got restored. And once you get restored and get forgiven, you have a clean conscience. You're not, well, I can't say anything about drug and drug use because I used to be a drug addict. No, you might be the main one who need to talk. And if the only, if you're disqualified from talking about sins, if you've never been involved in the sin, then I guess Jesus couldn't preach at all. Since he never sinned. Amen. I'm headed somewhere with this. Um, one of the news agencies, I'm talking about the, how the world is talking loud, showed a picture of the lieutenant governor. Now, they didn't get his official photograph because every time you or government official that's an official photograph no they got the one of him here with me standing beside him got a good picture of mother Dejanave with her beautiful self and uh, secretary McNeil and, and that's the picture that they chose to put online as they told that story that's called pedagogy. See, what they were doing is that they weren't just attacking him, but they were attacking all of us. They were trying to call us all hypocrites. So they show him, yes, did they have it up on the screen? If you could put it on the screen, amen. This is the picture. Can y'all see that? You, you're not going to be able to? Okay, I, all right. We're, going to look, we're doing the next best thing. See that? Now that's the governor. That's him. And uh, they cut me off. I'm cut off. That's half of me. And uh, on this one, mother, they cut you off too. McNeil, they got you front and center. Uh, if somebody would be so kind. Thank you. Yes. So look at this. And right there, our Jesus is Lord. See, now, they didn't use his official picture. This is the world's way of coming after the church. Amen. And, and I'm here to say, you know what I did? I called Governor Robertson uh, Thursday night on my way to church. And I told him how proud of him I am and how much I love him and how uh, unashamed of him I am. In fact, I thank God for him. And his wife, who is first class all the way. See, and, and, and I'm bring, I, I talked about it Thursday night. And I'm talking to you about it today. Because this is my way of talking just as loud. Yes, 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 yes. As they did. Yes. See, yes. You, why didn't you put up an official picture? No, that's an attack on us. Well, yes, we're pro-life. Yes, we believe that the first and most important right of every human being is the right to be born. And every one of us are glad that our mother uh, gave birth to us. And most of us, as sure as we're black, most of us were born in poverty. Amen. In, in suspicious situations. But for those who are present who have had an abortion, as you can see, God is a forgiving God. And if you've repented of your sins, 
Because what else can you do with sins that you've committed other than repent? Well, somebody please tell me. The only thing that God requires is that you repent. The Bible says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things that are good that he may have to give to him that needeth. All you can do is repent. And then go on. Think of all the lives that this man of God has saved as a result of what they went through. Perhaps one of the problems that we have in not fighting back and not speaking up is a misinterpretation of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. Are y'all hanging in there with me? Ephesians 4 15 says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up Unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Speaking the truth in love. Uh, many people interpret this particular passage um, with regard to tone. I do not. I believe that what Paul was speaking of was motivation. Not necessarily tone, but necessarily motivation. It doesn't excuse tone, but it really deals with the why. Speak the truth in love. What motivates the believer is love. Love for God and love for mankind. You can't reach the lost if you hate the lost. Amen. You can't win nobody to the Lord hating the person. The Bible teaches that we're to pull people out hating the very garment that is spotted by the flesh. The filthy garment, but you reach and you try to save the individual. Now, sometimes it's necessary when you're trying to win somebody, when you're trying to help someone, when you're trying to defend God's truth, there comes a time when you have to speak with power and authority. And then there are other times when you can be a little more laid back. But uh, it, 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 it all has to come from, if you're following me, a loving heart. Speak the truth in love deals more with why we're saying it than tone. The Bible teaches in the Colossians that we're to let our speech be with grace. Isn't it interesting that it says seasoned with salt? It didn't say seasoned with sugar. Didn't say seasoned with Nutrisweet or aspartame, praise the Lord, but seasoned with salt. Salt uh, adds zest. Amen. Salt, you know, I. Um, I'm not a, I couldn't make a living cooking, but I can cook when I want to. Amen. I, f I fixed my dinner last night and cooked breakfast this morning. Yes, I did. I, I did it. And, uh, and you know, I like it when I'm cooking. I like to cook and clean up at the same time. So by the time I sit down, everything's washed. Everything's put back, and I can sit there with my, my fork and my, and my knife and my fork and my coffee and just enjoy that omelet and my toast and drink my coffee, whatever. Just have a good, good and, and, and Pam won't even know that I cook unless she get up and there's a lingering aroma there. Because, uh, see, it, when I cooked, it was around about uh, uh, 5, 5.30. She, she, was, she, was, she was asleep, say amen. Well, I, you know, I'd be here for the 8 o'clock. Um, and um, uh, I, in, I, I, in, I, in, I enjoyed it. I, I, I cooked. I ate and got myself together, all right? But I like to clean, if you're, if you're praying for me. Um, as I go and then make preparation for the next thing. 
Are you all with me now? Now, in dealing with cooking, when I wanted to make, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a black man. You, you don't put much salt in stuff. Most times I don't put any in there. I'm, I'm a 60-year-old brother who's in a high-stress job, but I'm not on high blood pressure medicine. Isn't the Lord good? Yes. The Lord healed me of high blood pressure when I was in college. And, uh, and uh, I've, I've been uh, 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 free of that and uh, not on medicine. Lo, all these years, leading you. God is good. God is good. But, it, but in seasoning it, when you add salt, salt don't sweeten the thing. So there comes a time where the believer has to speak to an issue and speak with power. Are you following me? We're living in a time when weakness and vulnerability and fear are portrayed when it comes to the church as virtues. Now the world can talk as loud as they want. You have churches today defending a lie. We, we just saw a lie. We just saw the lie of lies told the other day. Now, don't come telling, don't even look at me. Well, you, you shouldn't say that about a, another black person. Um, no, I'm not considering her color. She didn't consider her color when she got ready to get married. I'm talking about... Katanji, Brown Jackson, God bless her, a nominee to be an associate justice on the Supreme Court. Now, President Joe Biden said, said that if he is um, elected president and if he gets an opportunity to put someone new on the court, that he would choose, he would make his choice among black women. Did he not? Now, did he not? Now, unless you've been living underneath the bed somewhere and you just don't keep up with anything, and I wouldn't admit it if it was me, you know that's what he said. So you know that one of the reasons she was sitting there, her, not him, but her. One of the reasons that she was sitting there was because she was, she is a woman. Second reason, if we divide in thirds, that she was sitting there is that she was black. Now I'm thinking the remaining third has to do with qualifications. But two thirds had nothing to do with anything that she had anything to do with. Because she didn't make herself black. And she didn't make herself a woman. Humans, thank you for that hand clap. Humans can't do that. Amen. So he knew what the meaning of woman is. I'm headed somewhere. Amen. I'm headed somewhere. And uh, I want to say it to you because I guarantee you, you're not going to hear this anywhere else in Raleigh. Um. Uh, and, 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 a, and a question was asked that was a legitimate one during this Women's History Month. During Women's History Month. And also when you consider during Women's History Month, in the Ivy League, women have just gotten their behinds handed to them on a platter because a man who is pretending to be a woman who when he swam with men was ranked of 462nd. He was the 462nd best male swimmer. He figured out how to become number one. Pretend to be a woman, swim with the women and he went from 462nd to number one. And all those sisters are upset because, you know, I hate to be the second place girl. 
Because she's standing there saying to herself, I could have been number one. I could have won this. In fact, I did win. And look, standing up there, a tall man. And then you look down there, Women don't have a bulge down there. Yeah, I said it. It needs to be said. Yes, I said it. Y'all get out of here, all you. So y'all try to pretend you're that sensitive. You're not that sensitive. But you may be. But that's the point of this sermon. Why can't we talk like them? The world is just running roughshod over us. That's my point. And then the saints, how are you going to be a missionary? How are you going to be effective if you are too afraid to tackle the issues of our time? I mean, like some of these churches are requiring that people uh, get a COVID test to enter into them. No, I'll tell you what test you need to require. If you're going to require a test, how about requiring an AIDS test? How about requiring a herpes test? How about requiring a, a gonorrhea test? You got all them sisters running there. Test them. You want to test somebody. We're talking about tests. So this, during Women's History Month, Women are being defeated. And let me tell you something, women. If these trannies had their way, they would, this wouldn't be Women's History Month. They're working hard to try to make women history. But I'm going to tell you something, brothers. You may not know this. You may not know it, but I know it. There is no civilization. There is no human race. There is no continuance of the race without God made women. You got to have women. You got to have women. You got to have the woman. I'm telling you right now, brethren, if all the ladies leave the church, I'm preaching that sermon. They said that everybody's saving entitled, Finally, my brethren, farewell. I'm leaving you. I'm going wherever they went. Praise the Lord. Amen. God made women. And he made the woman for the man and made her prettier than the man. Amen. Made her shape right. Now, if there's a man who disagrees with that, I'm going to pour all the oil that I have in this bottle. I'm going to anoint you with every, uh, all the oil I got. I'm going to preach it just, I'm working my way back to Joel. I'm actually in Joel now, but I'm making it relevant. There is something going on. And the world is talking loud. Uh, the lady said she could not provide the definition to woman. I w that would have been easy. Had they asked me, said, can you tell me what a man is? I would have said, exhibit A, me. So I ain't got to go much, no further than that. Exhibit A. A woman, by definition, is an adult female. But she wouldn't answer because she's afraid that she may defend the LGBTQ. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Plus community. Now the problem, now let me tell you something, you parents in here. Sister Ship, Brother Ship, let me tell you, let me tell you all something now. Parents, the problem, now you think, L is bad. G, B, T, Q is bad. Plus is even worse. Because plus is the silent letter of the acronym. Because if they tell you what that letter is, if they, see, they ain't ready to tell you yet. If they tell you, they, they know you'll fight. Or oh, I like to thank you would. I don't think some of you got any fight left in you. But for those who have some fight, 
They will fight if they find out what the plus is because the plus represents the silent letter. And that silent letter is P for pedophile, pedophilia. That's the plus. They, these people, which explains her voting record, her constantly giving a, the pedophiles a lesser sentence than what was recommended. There are people who are trying to get the American public to see pedophilia as just another sexual option and I'm here to say not over my dead body. The devil is a liar. I'm going to tell you something. I'm preaching today. I've, I've had to do it. I have had the unenviable duty, but I did it. Now, I may make some of you who are streaming, may, well, I don't like wooden anymore. I'm going to turn them off. Turn me off. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go join another church. Will goodbye help? Go ahead. But I've done it. I found out that certain persons in the audience who were a good amen corner. They said amen better than some of uh, you who I used to could rely on to get amen from. I found out, man. Some people, some they just dry up. I don't know what happens to you. Just moody, you. I mean, you're rah, rah, then you? Then next time we see you, you don't speak. You're distant. You're hard. I mean, and, and, and guys really ain't supposed to be like that. You know, no, nah, no. Nah, guys, you know, guys supposed to be, you know, you, you, you really supposed to meet a man one time. Because certain biological changes don't take place in us every 30 days. Y'all don't hear me. I've, I have talked and said to persons on more than one occasion. I had to do it. Mother Williams, I had to do it. When I found out, they were sitting there, smiling, saying amen, pushing me on, cheering me on, giving a good offering but a convicted pedophile. I'm not talking about questions. I know. I didn't assign on any of those occasions this task to anybody who works for me. This is a job for the pastor. I called him into the office. How you doing? Love you with the love of the Lord. But are you a pedophile? Are you convicted of that? <sighs> yes, sir. Well, sir, we got a problem. The problem ain't whether or not Jesus saves, because he does. The problem is not whether or not Jesus delivers, because he does. But here's the problem. We got little children here. Here's the problem. Now here's the problem. We got little children here. Children are innocent. Children are vulnerable. Children cannot protect themselves. And uh, uh, I, I, brother, brother Ship, I, 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 I love you, but you know something? I don't want to have to contend with the version of you that I would have to contend with if a pedophile abused your child, then you find out I knew but didn't tell you. I mean, I can, I can blow smoke with the best of them, but I don't want to, I don't want to fight nobody and have to, I, I didn't mess with the child. Uh-uh. So I said, you got your choice now. You can move on quietly or I got to tell the whole church. But I can't have that kind of predator 
in here. Children, children go to the bathroom too much. They walk too much. They're all out in the hall. They're not too much, but they, they, they feel a degree of freedom because they are protected. And it don't take but a minute. Don't take but a minute. That is a, that is a egg that cannot be unscrambled. That's a bell that can't be unrung. Well, what if somebody's watching now and they were thinking about joining and they've gone through that? Well, they found out that that it's not going to work. Because let me ask you a question. Whose child am I going to risk? Come on, raise your hand if you you want. Well, Pastor, you can take a chance on my grandbaby. Let me see your hand. Pastor, you could take care, you could take a chance on my son or my daughter. Let me see your hand. No. This is why we need to cry aloud and spare not and fight these demons because ain't nothing sexy about no child. Now, if you look at a baby and you get turned on, you got the devil in you. A child, a child, and you're running around with a boner for a child. That's demonic. That's demonic. That ain't natural. When God brought Eve to Adam, Eve was grown. And Adam said, now this. When she came with them hips and all that. Hips, breath, I mean everything. Everything was grown. I had to just jiggle <laughs> <laughs> that was a woman. There wasn't no child. And then the wickedness of a pedophile, you will ruin somebody's baby to satisfy yourself. Now that person's got to deal with that for the rest of their life. It messes the family up. It messes you up for generations. She ain't gonna leave the children with you. If she gets married and gets children, they ain't staying with grandma. They ain't staying with grandpa. Because she knows if you're wicked enough to come after her, you certainly will mess up the grands. It's a wicked thing. And any judge, any judge who won't sentence them to the full extent of the law, that thinking it's flawed. I don't care what color she is. Nah, I said it. We are living in an odd time. And all you hear from the, the church world is don't say much. Don't talk too much. You don't want to hurt yourself. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't preach against sin. You're too hard. You're too judgmental. You're too rough. But if you get up and preach nothing and just make people shout, we call that preaching. I don't go along with that. I don't go along with that. Well, it may hurt your ascension in the church. I don't want to hurt my ascension to heaven. That's what I want. I want to go to heaven. I want to go where Jesus is. Amen. See, we're living it in a day. See, and, and, and people are messed up. I was listening to a young lady, and I'm going to preach to you. I'm going to preach. I was listening to a young lady who transed and became a trans male. Now, you know there's no such thing, but I'm, I'm telling you. And then she trans, just transitioned back. And that girl, the prettiest little girl you ever seen, she talked about how her life was messed up. She talked about how, because uh, they won't tell you, uh, ladies, that in order to keep enough testosterone in you, which is not natural to you now, it's not natural to you. So you're, you're putting this unnatural male hormone in you. It takes a needle three inches long 
And then you got to take it and work it down in your thigh, down in the muscle. I ain't talking about no little flu shot, but down in there and then shoot it. And then when she talked about how she felt with all of that surging in her, two worlds going on in her. God's world, the way he made her. And then the indoctrinations. And then the, the effect of this hormone being placed in. These people, oh, they need prayer. They need prayer. They need deliverance. They don't need to be celebrated. Obama celebrated the transsexuals. Oh, he did. He did. Look it up. Him and Michelle celebrated the trans. Told the homosexuals, we got your back. What does that mean? The first president in the history of this country who said without any qualifiers, without tweaking it, without fixing it, people should be able to love whomever they want to love. That ain't what God said. God said that he made the, the female for the male and the male for the female. God never said you ought to be able to love who you want to be. That's Satanism, that kind of thinking. See, sat Satanism, the, the core teachings of Satan is, Satanism is do what you want. Do what you like. That's Satanism. Do what you like. Do what you want. Make your own rules. This is why ain't nobody in here, and I'm just telling you right now, now a visitor might get away with it, but they won't twice. Don't get up here talking about no, uh, get up, don't, don't stand up in this church preaching. Talking, well, I want to tell y'all what my truth is. You won't finish your sentence. I'm, I'm going to tell the people, cut the mic and get them take my mic from you. Because, see, when you start talking like you have a truth, do you know what you're doing? You're calling yourself God. You don't have no truth. You got to be a God to have a truth. And we're not called to teach our truth. We're called to preach and teach God. God's truth. Amen. And what man is trying to do, they're trying to get rid of God. They're trying to get rid of God from the church. They're, they're trying to get rid of God from the Bible. They're trying to get rid of God. And then once you get rid of God, now we're left up to our own minds. And all of a sudden now we're living in a day where we respect people who, cre who are by gender whatever they think they are. Regardless of what uh, reality says. Now in reality, I'm standing there looking at a woman. But in her mind, she thinks she's a man. So I'm supposed to now call her a man and, uh, and, and, and deny my eyes, deny reality, deny everything because she thinks this is who she is. Well, I'll tell you what. I go along with that if I, I go along with 100%. Sister Douglas, if a missionary, if the man who's 5'2 can think himself 6'5 and it worked. Come on. Where are you? You're 5'2, 5'1, and just decide. Well, you just go decide. Well, I'm 6'5. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, and another person is talking to them who are their same, same height and they want to know why you're not looking up at me. Because I'm 6'5". But both per persons are 5'2". No, 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 you should be looking up. Well, if I look up, I can't see you. Oh, yes, you can because I'm 6'5". Well, why are you 6'5"? Because in my mind, I'm 6'5". That's ridiculous, isn't it? It's no more ridiculous than a man saying he's a woman. God have not called us to play that game. We're just as big a liars as they are. Preach wouldn't. I'm headed somewhere. This weakness. They want the church to be weak. They want to go along with everything. This despite that there are 75 instances in the Bible, 75 instances from 29 verses that tells us in scripture to be not dismayed. 75 times we're told don't look around in fear. That's what dismay means. 
Don't, don't uh, be distressed and filled with anxiety because something unexpected happened. Including COVID. COVID scared us to death. Canceled everything. Shut the church down. The preacher argued to keep the church closed. When the governor said, you can open the church, you, uh, the preacher said, I'm going to leave it closed. I remember when President Trump said, go back to church. The preacher's arguing with him. We ain't going back. The same preachers who all your life told you that it was right to attend church. Same preachers who talked about how it's right to be faithful. And that's why many of them are struggling getting their members to return. Because you convince them that watching it on TV is just as good. And the problem with that, and, and I thank God for those who are streaming, who stream from afar, and those who are hospitalized, and people from other states. I'm not talking to you, but uh, members from right around the corner. It's time to come to church. See, the problem is, what happens is, what happens is, people go to the next, they degenerate to the next step. Oh, I know service starts at 11. I can catch it later. I'll catch it a little later because I want to watch the game. After a while, you know what? Later never comes. And you're talking to them and you can tell just by their talk. They have not seen anything. They, they didn't even know we was in a district meeting. <laughs> They're not keeping up. See, you, 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 you know, there's a word for that. You're backsliding. Backslider. And Satan understands this. People who understand the human psyche understand it. Folk who work out know you can't miss too many days in a row for any reason. Because if you miss one day too many, now it's easy to miss. It's much harder to get back in that gym. Some of you, you know it because you miss one day too many and it's been a year or two or ten since you've worked out again. See, it got away from you. You have to keep yourself in the groove. Praise the Lord. And the same thing with church attendance. We're told 75 times, be not dismayed. We're told 365 times in the Bible, 365 times, one time for every day, be not afraid. You think that's by coincidence? Every day, God says, be not afraid. We're told 25 times to be strong. It's repeated 25 times in the Bible, 26 times to be encouraged. 40 plus Bible verses speak of strength. Why would we let the devil weaken us when the word of God speaks of strength like this? 54 times in the Bible, there are 54 Bible verses that deal with weakness and we're not encouraged to be weak. With this being said, my question is, what is happening to the church? What is happening, bishops? What is happening, leaders, superintendents, pastors, supervisors, district missionaries, people of power and influence? What is happening to us? Paul knew that Timothy was his successor. And he wrote to Timothy because Timothy had a problem with fear. And Paul said to him in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. Notice Paul speaks of the spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. This is spirit of fear opposed to Holy Spirit. Spirit of fear opposed to the Holy Spirit. Are you praying for me? And let me tell you, this word spirit of fear, it translates uh, fearfulness. It is the will of Satan to have you walking around fearful. Fearful of everything. You're fearful of COVID. COVID. You're, you're scared to sneeze. You're, or if you get a cold, you're fearful. Every little thing, you're fearful. If, 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 if you feel a little off all day, you, you're afraid you got cancer. You're just fearful, fearful. Fear has torment. Job said the things I feared has come upon me. It's not the will of God that we live in fear. Afraid of this and afraid of that. Afraid for this and afraid for that. When you read extra biblical literature, extra biblical literature teaches that this word was used for those who fled on the battlefield. How many of us now 
are running, dropping our weapons on the battlefield and choosing to say nothing, choosing to not speak up, choosing to not fight. We won't, we won't fight for the unborn. We won't fight for marriage. We, many of us are not even fighting to save our own marriages. We won't fight for, 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 for standards, for biblical truth. It's not the will of God for us to run, amen, in fear on the battlefield. That's a spirit of cowardice. Too many of us have fled from the battlefield. Most churches, denominational churches, non-denominational churches, most churches that are independent churches love to spend more time rethinking, redefining, dumbing down, and reimagining Christianity than they do simply preaching it. I'm here to tell you, Christianity doesn't need to be rethought, reimagined, redefined. All Christianity needs is to be preached. All Christianity needs is to be lived. There's nothing wrong with Christianity. Christianity is the only thing that's perfect. The Bible is the only thing that's perfect. The Bible teaches that the law of the Lord is perfect. We are not perfect. We are flawed. We are sinful. We all deal with sinful desires, sinful thoughts, sinful inclinations, sinful ways. Sin, sin, we all have to contend with sin. The only thing on this earth that does not have sin is the word of God. And how in the world are are sinful people supposed to critique this perfect book? No, all we need to do is adjust to it. Obey it. Walk in it. And we'll be just fine. Are you praying for me? Well, let me speed up. You are doing a little better than they did at eight. Amen. It just needs to be preached. Paul said that God's given us the, the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Power, the ability. Love, that which, which causes us to do that which is right. Sound mind, self-discipline. It takes courage to stand and fight in a day like today. Oh, right quick, if you would turn to Romans Chapter number eight. I want to read something to you in the name of the Lord. And we're going to go on. Paul says this in Romans 8 and 14. I'll just read it for time. He says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Again, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14 through 17. For we have not received the spirit of of bondage again to fear. That is, we have not received the spirit that leads us in slavery to fear. Thank you, Jesus. But we have received the spirit of adoption. Thank you, Jesus. We have received the spirit of of adoption. That spirit that that, that calls God to bring us in. And to be a part of his family. And look at this. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have received the spirit that has given us a relationship with God. Where he's not only is he our father, but he is our daddy. The spirit that makes us his. I belong to the Lord. I'm his. He's my daddy. Children often brag on their daddy. My daddy is taller than your daddy. My daddy is bigger than your daddy. I can do this because who my daddy is. Well, I tell you things. I thank God for my daddy. My God, my daddy made everything. My daddy is the king of the universe. Can, can I get a witness? Says whereby we cry, uh, uh, Abba, Father. You see that? Now, it says, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit has bore bore witness in me with my spirit that I am God's son. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, then join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer uh, with him, that we may also be glorified together. As a child of God, I'm an heir of God. An heir is one who stands to inherit something. We're joint heirs with Christ. What Christ will inherit, we will inherit. We're children, we're joint heirs with Christ, but we got to be willing to suffer with him and to identify with him. 
Amen. The spirit of God in me causes me to cry out and say, I am a child of God. The God of the Bible is my father. It is the will of God that the truth of God be spoken. Listen to me now with boldness. We're almost there. The Bible says in Acts 4.31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Boldness, that is with freedom, with frankness. Praise the Lord. Boldness, confidence, plainness, or exactness of speech. Not like what we heard the other day. No, I can't give an answer to a woman. No, when you have the Holy Ghost, you can speak plainly. You can speak the truth with power and authority. Are you with me? Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. And we're going to begin reading. I'll read it to you uh, with the uh, 13th verse of 1 Corinthians chapter number 9 because I want to show you this because let me tell you something. We don't have a choice. Now, now listen. Now listen. Now listen. Listen to me now. God has called us in these last days to be his voice. And the question, Coach Stewart, God bless you, sir. The question is, how many of us are actually called? Now, I didn't ask how many of us have the title or the papers. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about the calling. I contend that not everybody's called who say they're called. I can't put no, a finger on an individual, but I'm, I'm in general. See, because there are certain things that are present when God called you uh, that um, we don't see as much. See, because the calling of God, depending upon what God have called you to, Cause you to put everything on the line. I was laying in my bed with my football scholarship, a starting athlete on the team. My mother's first child going to college. When the Lord woke me up and said to me, your football playing days are over. Call it. Go home. Get a job in the factory. Calling. And marry Pam. In about three to six months. I walked away. Following God. He didn't call me to a, a posh job. He said, factory. I left college and I went to J.P. Stevens. And uh, they wouldn't hire me as long as they thought I wanted to be there for a summer interim job. That was saved for the white folk. I had to tell them I'm not going back. So then they viewed me as, okay, this is another dead-end street. We're going to get my job in the card room. I got my job. Oh, it was in the spin room. Got my job working in the spin room. I went from being a college uh, football player to working in the mill. Started out on second shift. Mom, you remember? She told me later on, she wondered if I was crazy. <laughs> And I think she felt that way because not only did I, did I do it, but I did it with joy. See, I'd heard from it. And when I went and told my professors, they looked at me, they said, I guess there's nothing we can say to you to change your mind. My coach said, I guess there's nothing 
I can say to you to change your mind. No, sir, I got to go. And I told the student body. We had a wonderful Christian student body. So I got to go. And I remember the day as I was leaving the campus, they were having service, and I looked back. And I saw him, and it blessed me. Tears welled up in my eyes. But I knew I was following God. And in following God, sometimes he gives you no guarantees. You can't, you can't, you can't hedge your bets when you're following God. Y'all don't hear me today. Look at this. Look at this. I, I'm, I'm taking too long. But I'm, I'm going to get us out on time today. And when y'all see me speeding up, get with me. Paul said in uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13, he says, Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And, the, and they which wait at the altar are partakers of that altar. Translated, they who work full time, who work in the temple, have the right to be full time. And they that wait on the altar are partakers of the altar. So when people would bring their offerings to the altar to be offered up to God, the priest got a portion of it. He had an instrument where he could reach in and pull a portion. And the portion that he pulled off, that was for him. So whatever they brought before God all day, a portion of it went to those that work on the altar. Does it make sense? Now watch the next verse. It says, even so hath the Lord ordained, moving away from the temple now to current day, present day Christianity. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. You see that? Makes sense, right? So the Bible endorses being a full time preacher. He says, but I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things that it should be done for me. He says, I haven't taken advantage of any of these rights that I've had, I have, nor, nor am I writing this so you will start to do like you're supposed to do for me. As a matter of fact, he told the church at uh, Corinth, they were so stingy. He told them, said, now I have robbed other churches, taken wages of them to do you service. So he did take wages. Well, where's that at in the Bible? I knew you'd want to know. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. I robbed other churches taking wages of them to do you service. So he says here, he says, though, now follow me now, I'm headed somewhere. Though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Why? I can't brag about it. For necessity is laid upon me. He said, there is a compelling force that's placed on me. Paul says, I can't brag because I'm a preacher. This calling is so heavy that it's compelling. That's why I said to any preacher, whether you have a pulpit or not, you have an audience. It's called the street. Amen. There's no shortage of sinners. Right. See, you, you can't claim a compelling force, but you ain't out there witnessing. Right. Well, I just got to share this. Well, there's more than one way to share it. A compelling force. Missionaries, y'all not saying amen? You too. God called you, then, then the, the calling carries a compelling force. Every now and then in the grocery store, you ought to witness to somebody. Yeah. On the street, at the airport, wherever, wherever, in your family, at brunch, lunch, dinner, Compelling force. Look at this. Compelling force. Everybody say compelling force. I'm going to show you that we're in trouble because we're, uh, we don't have a choice with this. He says, in fact, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. And he didn't notice what he says. If I do it willingly, I have a reward. But you know what? 
whether you want to or not, if God have called you, he says, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me, whether I want to or not, God had put this in me. Jeremiah wanted to for a while and then he lost it. And he said, I'm not going to preach anymore in his name. But, a, but he found that there was a burning fire shut up in his bones. In following God, you may have to go broke. In following God, you know, uh, uh, you know sometimes people, people see, see me now. Yeah. Look at the, 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 the suits. What he drives. Yeah, but I didn't wake up one day. Right there, right here. That was a journey. A journey into having nothing. But joy. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, one of the things that got me through was, you know, in Raleigh, they used to have a, I got to preach, they used to have a, a, a belt. Y'all remember that, that big belt they used to have uh, downtown on Wilmington Street? That same, that, that, that got most of us out because, see, all the, the suits, they were all seconds. And you could go down there, you could dress up cheap on the, on the cheap. And, and they were messed up. Sometimes you, you wear the pants and one side of the pants would be light, shiny, and the other side would be dull. That's because when they were making them, they got the, they got the uh, material mixed up and it's going different ways. Instead of flowing in the same direction, it's going in a different direction. But these were cheap. They were cheap. And most of the suits, you know, had tears in them. And we learned stuff like reweaving. See, some of y'all ain't never heard of that because you ain't never had to reweave. But to reweave, if you got a tear in the suit and you take it to somebody who can make it almost look like, you know, nobody noticed. And, you know, more people notice than they said. People just kind. And, and, and so we made it. We got through. But you know what? If you didn't complain about it. That was a compelling force. That was something that said, I got to do this if it don't pay off. If I don't get any money, if I never become a this or that, because none of those things were in the cards. None. But there's a compulsion. What has happened to the church today? Where's the compulsion, preachers, to open your church? Where's the compulsion to preach with power and authority? Where is the compulsion? To declare God's truth if it kills you, if it breaks you, if it changes your lifestyle. Where is the compulsion? It broke Paul. It changed his lifestyle. Paul said everything that I had gained, every credential that I had, I lost them all for Christ. Did he not? Did he not? He said, I gave it all up for the more excellent knowledge of my Lord and Savior. That's what a compulsion will do. It would almost make you crazy. And that's why you have to be married to the right person. I told Pam, I said, look, I came home one day. I said, look, uh, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to grow this church, but I can't. Because now they want me to work every Sunday. And God knows we needed the money. The church didn't have any money. They couldn't pay. And... Uh, Need the money, but God's and the Lord didn't even the Lord didn't even work with me. I said, God, what what am I gonna do? They, they, they want me to work every Sunday. And the Lord told me, He said, Well, I ain't got but one thing to say to you on that. The church won't grow unless you preach on, on Sunday. I said, But Lord, uh, this is how I earn my living. And uh, and the church haven't grown to where it could support me. And the Lord said, Yes, and the church won't grow unless you're there on Sunday. Yeah, but Lord, they want me to re work on Sunday. And I need to keep the job because I got a family. I got this and that. And the Lord said, yeah, but the church ain't going to grow unless you're there on Sunday. And you know, that's the way to look. That's the way to see. You can't outwit God. And you may be smart enough to talk your way around a lot of things. But you can't talk your way around God. God said, yep, yeah, I heard you. 
I, you know, after a while, the Holy Spirit said, you know, how many times are you going to tell me this? You think I'm stupid? I hear you. But what I want you to do is to trust me. Watch me. Watch me. I got here following God. Then sometimes when people meet you, they just met you. Oh, did you see what he had on the day? No, but don't, 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 don't judge me by the day. Amen. This, 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 this represents a journey, a compulsion. And it wasn't a compulsion for money. It wasn't motivated by how much I could make. It was motivated by what God told me to say. I've been told a thousand times, preacher, if you just change your preaching a little bit, if you just go a little easier, this could happen and that could happen. Oh, forget it. If I got to deny God's truth to get it, I don't, I don't want to. Whatever, God, whatever God's truth don't give me, I don't need. Y'all don't like my preaching today. Praise the Lord. But now in our text, I'm watching the clock. Joel. Chapter 3. Joel written in uh, uh, 800, um, 850, 35 BC down to 796 BC. Joel said in 8, uh, and I'll, I'll do this quickly, as quickly as possible. He said in verse 1, Behold, in those days and in that time, shall I bring again the captivity of Judah. He prophesies. He's not speaking of the two divided kingdoms. He's talking about the one Israel. He prophesies and said, the day will come when I will make Israel a nation. Slide number one, please. Slide number one. May 14th, 1949. May 14th, 19. 49, Israel was made a nation. May 14th, there's the headlines, the state of Israel. Then President Harry Truman, he went along with the provisional government that was in place in Israel at that time. At midnight, May 14th, 1949, Israel was declared to be a state, a country. This fulfilled the prophecy of Joel. The beginning of the prophecy was taking place, thank you so much, in Joel chapter number uh, uh, 2 and verse uh, 28, where God said, in the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and on, on your handmaids and servants shall I pour out of my spirit, and they too shall prophesy. That was fulfilled on, in Acts chapter number 2, when the day of Pentecost was come. From that time up until May 14th, 1941, on in, we've been living in the last days. And see, so we see now the establishment of Israel. And notice what else he says. He says in, in verse 2, uh, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the, into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Notice what he says. I hate to say this. I hate to say this. He says, I will gather all nations. I hate to say, I'm, I hate that it's all nations. I hate that it's all nations. You know why? That includes this nation. The day will come when America will be against Israel. We are Israel's greatest ally. But Israel right now is very shaken. Israel is very shaken. Because as I stand here and preach to you, America is in negotiations with Iraq. Trying to get back in Iran, that, that Iran deal, the Iran neutral, nu nuclear deal. We're trying to get back in it, and we're trying to buy oil from Iran. And guess who is negotiating on our behalf? Guess who is speaking? Because the Iranians won't meet with Americans. They're upset with us. They won't meet with us. Guess who's, who is our emissaries? Who's talking for us? The Russians. The very people that we're at war against are in the room with the Iranians speaking for us. The, the Russians and the Chinese. And what kind of deal do you think we're going to get out of that? But what you see is the global affairs. And if Iran gets its nuclear weapon, Iran wants to fire its nuclear weapon on Israel. We see the realignment of nations. And remember when God does things, remember with God, the God of the Bible, a day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day. 
So God sees time differently than the way we do it. And see, we'll live to see a portion of this. Unless the rapture come back, none of us will live to see it all unfold. And yet the plan of God is unfolding right before our eyes. And we've been blessed to live, to see it. And he says, I will gather them in the valley of Jehoshaphat. I will say this to you quickly. I wanted to spend some time on it. But the, the valley of Jehoshaphat is also called the valley of decisions in verse 14. The word Jehoshaphat means judgment. You remember King Jehoshaphat was the king that God gave one of the most powerful victories to in the Bible. When the nations rose up against them, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when God says you will not have to fight in this battle, set the singers out on the battlefield and let them sing. And God gave an, amb an amb ambushment of the enemy and they destroyed themselves. But the valley of Jehoshaphat is also known as the valley of Hinnom. It's also called the Kidron Valley. And in Revelations chapter number 16, it is the place where the battle of Armageddon will take place. Would you let them see uh, on the screen the valley of Jehoshaphat? It is a place, look at that valley, look at that valley. This is believed where even though the exact location cannot be found, this is where they believe. And, and as a result of an earthquake, that would, it would create an even deeper valley that is going to form this valley where the greatest battle and the last battle will take place, where the armies of the world and the cabal that's in the world and all of the kingmakers and all of the, uh, uh, of the secret societies of the world will line up being led by the Antichrist and they will do battle with our Lord and this is what this is what Joel is talking about that will happen in the valley of Jehoshaphat are you with me and he says and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land says so yes you divided Israel you sent them here, you sent them there, but the day will come when I will make them a nation. He's already done that. And then this battle will take place. And so he speaks, he even rebukes them because they cast lots for his people. And they, look at this, verse 3 says, and, and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may might drink. You sold my sons for the price of, of a whore and you look at how they cheapen the value of human life and you sold uh, my Israeli's daughters for the cost of wine in verse 4 he singles out Tyre, Zadon and Philistia because they were known for the slave trade and they were the ones who was involved in taking Jews and sending them all over the world trading them in the slave trade and God asked these nations since you were so cruel to my people he says and when you read verse 4 God says have I done anything to you were you paying me back were you coming against me were you trying to pay me back for some wrong I have done and he says I will swiftly repay you for what you've done to my people Verse 5, because you've taken my silver, you've taken my gold, and you've carried away my goodly, my finest pleasant things, and you put them in false nations and on the false gods, and you sold my children, verse 6, even to the Grecians. You, you sold my children uh, as far away as Greece, he says, and I will raise them up out. Look at this. And God says, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return your recompense on your own head. What you did to my children, I'm going to do to you. We see God rearranging uh, the order of the world as he's working this out. He says, I will sell your sons and your daughters, verse 8, in the hand of the children of Judah. Israel is going to get them and they will sell them in the hands of the Sabaeans. Who were the Sabaeans? The Sabaeans were the people who dominated the trade route of the south. The Sabaeans were uh, the Arabians. The Sabaeans today are called Iran and Iraq. Oh yes. And so we see here the prophecy where he says to the enemies of Israel proclaim this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. 
let them come up. And uh, God says, get them all ready to fight me. Calling them to uh, the battle of Armageddon. This will take place in the great tribulation. I thank God that the rapture of the church will take place and we'll miss all of this, but we see shades of it. We see it falling in line as we speak today. This helps you understand what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on in Ethiopia. Of course, the media don't cover them. What's going on around the world, the realignment of nations, why America is being weakened. We're being weakened from within. Immorality is killing our nation. Bad policies are killing our nation. Crazy people in office are killing our nation. Why? Because the nation has to go down. And uh, he said to the sinners, said to the wicked, beat your plowshares. Let them see the plowshares and let them see uh, the pruning hooks. Beat your plowshares into uh, swords. Look at that. Use plowshares and the pruning hooks. And your pruning hooks into spears. And then he said, go on and encourage each other. Let the weak say that I am strong. That is, let them talk themselves into fighting against God. If the world can convince themselves that they are able to fight against God, don't you think the church ought to be able to convince itself that we're able to fight with God on our side? If the world is able to talk to, to themselves and say, we can shut the church down, we can silence the saints, we can keep the saints afraid, don't you think we ought to be able to say, at least amongst ourselves, the devil is a liar. We ought to be able to tell each other that our God is a keeper and that our God is a company keeper in a lonely hour. I want to know what are we saying to each other in these last days. I believe it's time for us to keep each other encouraged. To encourage each other to carry on in the name of the Lord. The devil told us that we were going to be destroyed. That, that, that COVID was going to kill us. But look at us, we're still here. And we're going on stronger than ever. Why? Because our God is real. And I'm here to say the wicked is boasting. They're talking loud. They've come out of the closet. Well, saints, let's come out also. And let's make our boast in the Lord. Let's point toward the sinner and then point toward heaven. We ought to be just like the sheep was. One writer said there were two, praise the Lord, uh, uh, sheep. There were two pastures. Uh, one on one side of the road and one on the other and on one side of the road the pasture was ignored the, the boards were breaking the sheep were hungry the sheep were starving but on the other side the pastures were green and they were green and lush uh, amen the fence was strong the porters was there and the sheep were healthy and on the side where the sheep was healthy the sheep pointed and said look at who my shepherd is and somebody said to the sheep who is your shepherd the sheep said the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want I'm glad I know that the God of Joel the God of the Bible is my shepherd and if I just stand with him if I just stand with him and speak up for him, if I stand with him and say what the Bible says, if I stand for him and declare his word to be true, he'll stand for me and he'll stand for you. Saints, don't worry. Don't be afraid in these last days. But let's get fired up. Let's talk that locker room talk. Let's encourage encourage each other let's grab each other by the hand and say man come on you can make it say sister come on you can take it I know they're ganging up on you 
in corporate America. I know they're ganging up on you, on your jobs, but I'm here to tell you, when we come to church and get into the presence of the Lord, when we come here and get together, let's sing songs that will inspire us to keep on running. Let's preach the word that inspire us to keep on standing. I know they've sold out, but I thank God that God is turning things. I watched. Now, I don't know him. I don't know his philosophy. I don't need anybody to fill me in on it. But I notice that Kyrie Irving, he said, I'm not going to let y'all put that stuff in my body it normally takes 20 years you got it to market in nine nine months and I don't want it in me and the state of New York changed the rules and said you can't play if you don't get the shot Kyrie said I'm not gonna do it I guess he had his own reasons but I noticed how the world turned on him. I noticed how the sports shows turned on him. First take, pardon the interruption, all of them talked about him. They didn't turn on Bellasio. They didn't turn on the government for putting that rule in place after he arrived. Probably had he known that they were gonna do that, then he wouldn't have joined the Brooklyn Nets. But they put it in after he joined. He stood his ground. He stood his ground. And just the other day, the whole thing got reversed. Now he's playing. Now if Kyrie, I don't know if he's saved. I don't know anything about him. But if Kyrie can stand his ground, if Kyrie can say to the world, talk about me. Talk about me on the sports shows. Talk about me. All of the talking heads, some of them who've never spent one day in the NBA, they're just part air. They can talk, 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 but Kyrie stood his ground, and now they've changed it. If he could stand his ground, what about you? What about me? We have the Holy Ghost. We have the Word of God. We have Jesus on the inside. We have each other. Let's stand and let's declare that our God reigns. You notice in the text, it said that Israel will abide forever, even though other nations will turn on Israel. They will never destroy Israel because the God of Israel is stronger than all of the other nations combined. And the God of Israel is our God. He's the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he is our keeper. He is our strength. He is our power. He told me to tell you, stand for me. Make your boast in the Lord. Stand for me. Take a chance on Jesus. He's got you. He's got your back. He's got your front. He's got your family. He's got your children. He's got your health. He's got your wealth. He has your today. He had your yesterday. He has your tomorrow. He's got it all worked out. Just stand. Just stand. I'm not going to let a sinner talk louder for the devil than I talk for my Lord. Hallelujah. Why can't we speak up and declare that our God is a keeper, that our God is able He's able, he's able, say yeah! Oh! Oh! Look at your neighbor and say, we can. We can 
can speak up. We can talk just as loud as they talk. We can declare the glory of God. My God today, the world will never beat me, out talk me, talking about a club. Then I can say that I can, uh, they'll, they'll never brag off of a club more than I'm gonna brag off church. They'll never be happier talking about their sin than I am talking about my righteousness. You'll never, you'll never glorify wrong like the saints are able to glorify right. How many are glad to be living right? How many are glad to be on the Lord's side? Glad that you're saved. Glad that you're sanctified. Glad that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. I've got the glad glads. And I've decided that I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep on proclaiming it. One reason is I have no choice. I told my wife, I said, the, the gospel that I placed us where we are today, that same gospel may take it all away. The same gospel that took me up, same gospel that led me to the meal, had my wife's hands, she was at the uh, hosiery meal, hands all callous. But, the, but when I talk about those times now, we were happy because we're following God. We, 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 we didn't feel like losers. No, because we weren't following God. God takes you through stages. See, takes you from one, one step to the next. Following God. And the lessons, the lessons, the things that I learned then helped me today. Despise not the days of small things. And you can't tell God how to bring you where he wants you. As a matter of fact, nine times out of ten, the very thing you don't want to do is what he's going to call for. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. He gave Abraham one son. If you want the anointing to speak up for God, meet that daughter right quick. Gave him one, Isaac, and then told him, sacrifice him to me. And Isaac, Isaac, Isaac was taken by his father. First time I read it, Brother Dunn, how you doing, man? First time I read it, I cried. When uh, Isaac looked at his dad and said, I see the altar. I see the fire. I see the wood. But dad, where's the sacrifice? Not knowing, you're it. You're it. And Abraham, the New Testament tells us what Abraham was thinking. Abraham was thinking that God would raise Isaac from the dead. Because that's the only thing he could come up with. He said, because you, you, he's my only son. You've already promised me that in him shall my seed be. My, he's my posterity. Uh, the other boy I had, you know, he told me, Ishmael, he's got to go. He's gone. And now you're telling me to sacrifice this one. And he's the only one. So that must mean the only, thing, only option that I have left is that he's going to raise this one from the dead. And when he drew back his hand to give God his all. See, he may not take your all, even if he requires it, calls for it. He may not take it, but he want to know if you'll give it to him. See, that's a whole lot of things we got up for God that we ain't going to give to him. Mm -mm. God says, no, I want that. I want, I want, I want that. time when you think you've given him your all, you'll hear him ask for more. 
It's just like God. I knew when the Lord gave me this message, it wouldn't be a shout message, but it's the last day. Christmas this one's for the warriors. It's the last day. It's the last day. The last day. A last day message. It, it examines everything. Now you see why I didn't say amen in the 8 o'clock. I want to pray. But today, I want to pray that God anoint us. And I'm in the book. That God, wherever you are. See, everybody's not called to, to do the same things at the same time. And no one person is the only one called to do a thing. God raises up preachers, he raises up missionaries, he raises up evangelists, he raises up people every day. And, and uh, uh, that's the way the kingdom works. And it's, and, it's, and it's marvelous. But wherever you are, God wants you all while you're there. Hallelujah. He says, I want you to speak up for me. I want you to be as vocal about me as they are about what they're doing. See, the world is trying to intimidate people. Up room, we're not going to be intimidated. We ain't going to be intimidated. See, and that's one of the reasons why they come after our church like they do. Well, churches don't, preachers don't talk like this. And then the, they can hear the other preachers, the in-house preachers, these guys are anointed. And then they, you put them up, they got fire and will tell it. And it's, oh my God, oh Lord, oh Jesus, help us. What, you mean tell me Wooten ain't the only one around there talking like that? No. But I want to pray for you. You don't have to worry about when and if God will speak up for you. See, really, that's incorrect thinking also. What do you mean, when is God going to speak for you? He made you. He made me. And he made us for his purpose. So all we want to know is, Lord, am I flowing in your purpose? He'll show you. He'll show you. He's for you. He'll show you. He got you. He got you, Tremaine. He'll show you. But God says, I want you to speak up for me. My friends who are streaming, God says, I want you to speak up for me. Speak up for me. Speak up for me. If the world can be talked into trying to fight against God, and by the way, it's a losing battle, they're going to lose. I don't know why anybody would serve Satan. He's already defeated. And I don't know why anyone wouldn't serve the Lord because we've already won. Israel will last forever. Father, we come before you right now. We come before you. And we ask you to anoint us today to speak for you. Everybody on this altar, everybody in this building, everybody who's streaming, we ask you, oh God, to anoint us, to be that bold soldier in every sphere, in every way that we can, in the name of Jesus. God, you've called us for such a time as this. The devil is trying to intimidate the church Oh, God, the media, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord. The world, but God, they're fighting a losing battle. Help us to win as many of them to you as we can. Help us to declare God's truth in the name of Jesus. Help us to stand. God, revive you right now. The Lord, revive your soul right now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord renew you right now. 
in the name of Jesus be renewed be renewed be renewed be renewed in the name of Jesus be renewed and speak up for him hallelujah speak up for his truth speak up for what is right don't be tainted by color don't be tainted by gender don't don't consider anything that you shouldn't consider only consider that what you should and that is whether it's in line with God's truth and may the blessings of the almighty God be on you right now in Jesus name amen hallelujah Now, for all who are sick, the Lord heal you. For all who have things up before him, because God's concerned about your welfare. Sometimes when we're preaching about these global things, sometimes you're sitting there saying, but preacher, I'm hurt. My heart is broken. God cares about your heart. God knows where you are. He cares about those things as well. But you got to know that you're called for such a time as this. And, and the battle is big. And the thing is that it's, it's strong. So God heal your heart. And, and God heal your bodies. And then, Lord, I pray for the finances of the saints. Give the saints supernatural, supernatural blessings. God stretch every dollar for you. God bless you right now. In the name of Jesus. Young man, uh, uh, my brother, are you saved? I felt like you were because I was watching you while I was preaching and you paid close attention. I said, now something's going on in that young man. Amen. Because you were locked in. He had a, he had a, he had a laser. Uh, let me shake your hand, brother. Stay with God. Stay with the Lord. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name. Live right. Live right. Be a Christian example. Be the example of a godly man. And God will do things for you. He'll open doors that you cannot see. See, how long have you been saved? For a very long time? Do you remember when you got saved? 2015. Very long time. <laughs> yeah, I... And me too. I've been hanging in there since 77. <laughs> Bless you, brother. Stay with God, man. Stay with God. Somebody praise the Lord for it. Perspective. Perspective. That's a long time. Depending on your age. That's a long time. That's a long time. God is good. You can go to your seats praising the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going home. We're going home. I want you to make ready your tithe and your offerings in the name of Jesus. Those who are streaming, I want you to uh, make ready your tithe and your offerings. We're going home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's a different kind of message. And you know, saints, I'll tell you something. Uh, I preached a third of it to you today. And I don't know when I'll revisit the rest and just fill in the blanks because uh, uh, there's another big event that's coming. The, the catching away of the saints. The catching away. So I, I alluded to that, but I didn't have time to go into it. See, in the midst of all this, we're going to be caught away. We're going to be caught away. Amen. We're going to be raptured. But we will see. We're seeing the unveiling of time and we're seeing all of the things that are lining up. Amen. The media is not telling us everything about this war with Ukraine. That's why when you hear me pray, I pray for those innocent people who are being killed. But that's, that's more going on than me. And anytime all of the media line up and all of them reporting a thing the same way, 
Something's wrong. Amen. It's a distraction of some sort. Amen. And that's just, they're, they're doing the war like they did COVID. Any um, dissenting point of view will get you labeled. Amen. These are the times in which we live. And there's no dissent when it comes down to innocent lives being killed. But I still would like to know, I would, I would like to know if I could talk to all of the American media, why aren't y'all covering Ethiopia? I'd like to know. I would like to know. Since November of 2020, thousands, tens of thousands have been murdered, been killed in the Horn of Africa. Ethiopia, Yemen, all these people killed and the American media, most, most people don't even know what's going on. But uh, uh, we get wall-to-wall -wall coverage um, with uh, Ukraine. I actually, I'm not saying that they shouldn't cover Ukraine, but I am saying that's not the only conflict. What about these other dispossessed people? I see people being interviewed. It just breaks my heart. To see the little children. Well, if the American media would show you the Ethiopian's children, maybe that would break your heart too. But they won't even show them. There's something wrong with that. I want you to get your offering and hold up your right hand. And Father, bless each believer. I pray a special prayer and blessing on the saints' finances the saints money God bless the saints and keep them bless us Lord we need you as never before keep us in Jesus name amen God bless you praise the Lord sister Barbara where is she where is sister Barbara I'm so glad you're back today it's a blessing to see you just love you with the love of the Lord how you doing <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you, dear. Praise the Lord. Look at these beautiful ushers today. Let's give our kids a big hand. They're serving. Now don't y'all give them a hard time. Amen. Praise God. Praise his holy name. While we're receiving this offering, I would like to ask you to appeal to you to come back this evening for our, the conclusion of the greater um, New Horizon District meeting, New Horizon District District meeting. Our superintendent, Superintendent William H. Cooper II, will be preaching tonight. An upper room, our church, is a part of this district. And uh, we don't, uh, I'll tell you something, you were just faithful uh, when you tr truly served as superintendent. But one thing you do know, you were faithful and William Cooper was right there with you. And tonight is uh, the last night and I'm going to be here and we're going to, we're excited about uh, uh, the conclusion of the matter. And I pray that every one of you will come because I know you ain't going to stay home and watch the Oscars. Don't nobody watch them. You see all the commercials they're putting out now? That's because the Oscars rating is so low. It's so low. Who cares about a bunch of folk who earn a living pretending to be someone that they're not? And they would do anything. I'm going to tell you what a lady from Hollywood, an insider, told me after I pray. Have I received all from, from everybody? Father, bless this offering in Jesus' holy name. Bless the saints for their giving. God bless those who have shared with us online today. In Jesus' name, amen. An insider told me, my wife was there, and she said, you know, in Hollywood, he said not every, uh, I'm talking about the male actors, not every male actor uh, is a sissy, but every one of them that you see, to get parts, they have to sign a paper that if that character, if the writers 
called for that character to be a homosexual or kiss a member of the same sex or anything like that. They have to sign off saying, if that's what the character does, that's what they would do. I said, well, no wonder God called me to be a preacher. Amen. Because I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even take that potential. Mm -mm. Would you? Oh, no. 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 Mm -mm. I, I wouldn't care if I knew the writer. And he promised me we'll never do that. I wouldn't sign saying that I would. Say amen. May we all stand. Thank you for coming. I pray that the word has blessed you, challenged you, and inspired you to speak up for the Lord. So now at the close of service, uh, we're going we're gonna to get out of here as quickly as we possibly can because, we, we, because it, we're going to come back tonight. Sometime between services, uh, when we announce that we've got something, people who have no intentions of coming back to church after service will stand there and want to talk for 40 minutes. No, they ain't coming back. <laughs> Say amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless our streaming family. May the Lord continue to bless and keep you. Let everybody say God first. God bless you. God bless every one of you. Amen.